So welcome, welcome. If somebody's invited you here, it's because you have been invited by somebody that's connected with our regenerative health community. So our, really our focus here as a community is helping people understand that the root cause of symptoms and imbalances in the body and that you can regenerate them by getting your body into the right environment and supporting your body with the right nutrients to thrive. So I would love to take some time right now um, to just open up to whoever has brought a guest here and would like to ask their personal questions. Go ahead, Deitra. Hi, I have a friend on the call that um, we talked yesterday and established that she has some adrenal weakness. She has high blood pressure and some other things going on in her body, but it came up that she has had three miscarriages and each time it's at the six week mark. And so I was explaining to her a little bit about progesterone dominance. And so invited her to the call today, just so you could shed a little more light on what's likely happening in her body. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you get pregnant, but you lose it. So first of all, I want to just say my heart goes out to you. I lost, um, I've lost seven in my adulthood. So I totally get it. I had twins that I lost and then I had five miscarriages. So my heart goes out to you, but I also love to share the perspective of the silver lining as your body is teaching you or telling you a story that it's not balanced enough right now to grow another human life. And so this is such a great opportunity for you to just work on your health and bring in a really strong baby. Uh, so whenever we're having miscarriages around six weeks or so, oftentimes um, what's happening is, is adrenal weakness and um, endocrine imbalance. So we can be off, you can have low levels of progesterone um, or your estrogen levels might be off a little bit. So what the allopathic community will do is say, oh, take progesterone tablets, you'll be fine. But really what your, what your body is saying is a very loud adrenal weakness. Um, so I would really focus on your gut biome because all your hormones are regulated by the gut. So um, basically it's really interesting. I was just actually listening to a podcast with Dr. Zach Bush, um, who is one of my mentors that I've trained with a lot. Um, and he's talking about that how human cells um, and their existence can only exist and operate properly in an ecosystem of bacteria and fungi. Um, and like, you know, how our, our gut is supposed to have 70,000 different microbes. And those microbes are actually the communicators with our brain. So the gut bacteria communicates with the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus sends its signal to the pituitary gland. And the pituitary is your endocrine controller. She controls the entire endocrine system, your hormones, your ovaries, your progesterone, your adrenal function, like all of it. But it all starts with the gut. And so here as a community, we really focus on that gut health and populating the right bacteria in the gut, removing pesticides out of the gut, which causes so much hormonal imbalance. Um, glyphosate is a huge endocrine disruptor. So glyphosate is on all of your non-organic foods. It's sadly in 75% of our air and rainwater as well. So it's something that we're being inundated with. And it's a large reason of why we are seeing so much infertility. Um, the second thing that correlates to infertility um, and, and potentially even if it's not hormonal is like literally there's not enough information present. So what that means is um, the human body actually requires, we are required to have essential amino acids. Essential amino acids mean we have to get them from plants. They don't, they don't come from anywhere else. Our body can't actually make these amino acids and there's nine of them that are essential. And those are the building blocks to our DNA. So like how we create the code basically in the body. And so um, there's a great, um, there's a great YouTube uh, from Dr. Zach Bush that I can try to find and drop in the feed here, but he talks about how what's happening in our environment is that our soil is so depleted and we're fast farming and we're using chemical pesticides and our plants are not having 
these essential amino acids anymore. So basically we're finding a, a plants with two or four amino acids, and that is not enough sequences of information. So the example that he gives is so great. He says, um, try to spell, you know, write a sentence out while you, while you're missing your vowels, you know, soon you're misspelling thousands and thousands of words. Um, and so I just really something to, to think about is, are you getting your essential amino acids? Are you getting your building blocks? Because what we see is, you know, the sperm meets the egg. The, so that happens, the fertility happens, but then as it's trying to build the baby, there's not enough information. And so we will see miscarriage really often. And now 50% of all women are dealing with infertility um, and same numbers with men right now. So we are in, in, in a state where we are not able to re procreate and rebuild. So what we do here is we focus on putting the right things in. Um, and basically we do all of our essential amino acids, plant-based, you're taking those daily. Um, you're taking a superfood micronutrient shake that's going to help not only nourish your cells at the, at the cellular level, like I'm talking nutrition that you've never had because ours is organic, kosher, non-GMO, and it's um, vine ripened. It's never picked until it's perfectly ripe on the vine. And then it's slow wind dehydrated at 88 degrees or less. So this is like cellular nourishment, which will increase your energy. It also helps populate healthy gut bacteria. It's just incredible. Um, and then our biomedic is designed to remove pesticides out of the gut. So it's scientifically proven and third-party tested to remove 75% of glyphosate in six weeks, um, which is amazing because there's nothing else on the market that is actually scientifically proven to remove glyphosate out of the body. And so that's going to help not only repair the gut damage, it's going to help with your hormone health and all kinds of things. Um, and then the last thing we have is apothecary. So this is the, I'm just, what I'm mentioning right now is one of the things that I would recommend for our most common, um, approach to cleansing and balancing the body. It's called our 30 day ultimate lifestyle transformation. Um, and the, the apothecary is an organic tart, sour, cherry juice. It's cold pressed. Um, and one serving is the equivalent of 30 cherries. So the cherries are really high antioxidant. Um, they help detoxify. They help balance out free radicals, which means like, like basically think of like stressed out cells in the body. It helps regenerate them and rebalance them. And um, also helps with skin elasticity and all kinds of stuff and immune health. It's just amazing. It helps reduce inflammation throughout the body. So I love our apothecary. Um, those are the foundational four products that is called the core four. And then if you're open to kind of, you know, getting in and cleansing, I always recommend women that are trying to conceive cleanse for, you know, 30, 60, 90 days before they conceive, because the egg that is dropped is from 90 days before. So the egg you dropped this month will be from 90 days ago. And so when we can really give that opportunity for our body to produce an extremely healthy egg and clean the lymph system, we're going to produce a very strong baby. Um, and I can attest to this. I had, like I mentioned, several miscarriages. Um, and then looks like I'm freezing here. Um, I had several miscarriages and then I just birthed two babies in a row that were that are insanely vibrantly healthy. They have the bluest eyes you've ever seen. They've never been on antibiotics. They've pooped every day of their life. Um, and I'm so thankful that I waited, that I did the work first because I see a big difference in my older children and then my babies now. Um, so I hope that was helpful, but what I would recommend for you specifically with the frequent loss is definitely focusing on our amino acids. Um, it's going to be a big part of getting those essential building blocks. I would do our 30 day ultimate lifestyle transformation. If you're open to a cleanse and I would do the be energetic and the white American ginseng. Um, so the white American ginseng helps balance your hormones and it's one of our fertility products. Uh, so that would be my top recommendations. And if, if you're not up for a full cleanse, then I would do the core four, and I would do the white American ginseng and the be energetic to support your adrenal glands um, to help your hormone levels. So I hope that's helpful. Right. Any other questions here? Okay. Yeah. This is Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Um, I have a friend on here who I've been chatting with for a couple of days. She had mentioned that she's been struggling with food sensitivities. 
Um, and she's tried cutting things out and it hasn't really helped that much. And then her inability to gain weight as well as hypothyroidism. And so I sent her a couple of videos on the gut health and the thyroid health, um, but I, she's also on this call. And so I want to give her opportunity to hear specifically for her what you would recommend and things behind her um, issues. Absolutely. Thanks so much for bringing her on. So um, inability to gain weight and then food sensitivities. I think if you, did you send the allergy call? I did not, but we did talk about um, high pathogenic load just within the, t- the chat. Yeah. So the allergy call is a great call to listen to um, because it explains the environment of the, when the gut biome is injured, then this causes like leaking. So everything is just dropping basically, essentially it's like leaky gut. When we have um, breaks in the tight junctions, then the outside world and the inside world become one and they shouldn't be, right? We really need that strong gut boundary to digest our food and then eliminate the waste. Um, But when there's an injury, it causes leaking into the lymphatic system and the lymphatic system then creates a histamine response to the food because it's undigested. So we actually produce um, something called CAO enzyme and it's a histamine reaction. So whenever you see allergies, you know that there's there's two things happening. Number well, three things happening. Number one is injury to the gut. Number two is a stagnated and backed up lymphatic system, which means that there's excess bacteria and um, parasitic waste because because you have gut injury, then the body has to produce more um, candida bacteria because your gut isn't breaking down the food. So bacteria has to break down the food. So that's how we get into this overpopulated um, bacterial area. So that's number two thing that's happening. And then number three, there's an adrenal weakness um, because your adrenals are not properly responding with histamine and the anti-inflammatory responses. So, and also adrenals are responsible for production of cortisol and production of your sugar. So it's your sugar metabolism, essentially. Um, So whenever we have a lot of allergies, we know that those three areas need to be focused on. Now, the other thing that you mentioned was inability to gain weight, which again is also gut related. Um, There's two things related mostly to, to that. I mean, obviously your thyroid and your metabolic function plays a role. Um, If we have heavy metal toxicity, this is a big thing that injures the gut and causes the thyroid to go down or go haywire. So if you were brought up on a lot of uh, pharmaceutical drugs or vaccinations or flu shots, those are all things that will contribute to um, the thyroid going down. I can speak to that. I had had Hashimoto, so I I didn't have trouble gaining weight. I gained all the weight, (laughs) but... um, I, I originally had Graves disease when I was 19. So I was, I, my thyroid went hyper. I was super, super skinny. And then it went hypo. Um, so everybody takes a different form in their body, but I was exposed to a lot of pharmaceutical drugs and heavy metals and those things go hand in hand. But when you can't gain weight, one, you're looking at your metabolic function Two, you're looking at the health of the gut and the ability to absorb nutrients right? So if you have a bunch of plaque built up on the bowel walls, your body, the microvilli can't even absorb nutrition. And there'll be several other indicators of that. It's like if you see undigested food in your stools, if you deal with gas or bloating, those are all other indicators that that's happening. And the number three thing is the pancreas health. Um, so those examples of undigested food, gas, bloating, belching, acid reflux, are all indicators that you have a pancreatic weakness. Um, And so when the pancreas is responsible for breaking down all your food, if it's not getting broken down, it can't be taken up, right? If you you can't break down the the food into um, absorbable nutrition, it can't be absorbed. So those are the three things I look at with inability to gain weight. And all of these things are cleaned up through detoxification. So um, in your specific case with thyroid health, I would probably recommend, um, depending on the diet that you're coming from, are, do you want to, are you, do you, what kind of diet do you eat right now? Can I ask, like, are you coming from a standard American diet or do you have any sense? Like, what are your sensitivities? Um, she did say that she has been including more fruits and vegetables into her diet. Um, she is very conscious. So I wouldn't say she comes from a standard American diet. No. Great. And, but what are the food sensitivities that she's dealing with? Just so I know what pack to suggest. Yeah. Let me 
go back. She mentioned gluten was one of them, um, an ability to handle gluten and lactose, and also salmon, tuna, eggs, and tomatoes were others. Um, salmon, tuna, and eggs are all super bad for you, so no problem there. <laughs> tomatoes, hopefully we'll get those back in your diet when they're fresh, not cooked. Um, but yeah, so I would recommend the ultimate lifestyle transformation with the epigenius kids. Um, I would not recommend the regular with those sensitivities. Um, and then I would, cause it also has a zinc gate, which is going to support our immune system and vitamin D has such a huge connection to the thyroid health and that's in the zinc gate. So that would be my recommendation. Um, and then I would, I would really look at the adrenal health, me potentially the be energetic or the ionic elements, um, could be good additions if, if it's in the budget. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Tiara. Hey, um, I have a couple of people here. The first person I have a question for, um, I've got a mom here with a 13 year old who's just been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. She also has apraxia um, and some other neurological diagnoses, and she's um, seen the video about thyroid, but I wanted you to speak specifically to um, what she would need to do for her daughter since she's still a teenager. All right, can you just slow down just a tiny bit? So apraxia, I heard, and it's for her daughter or for her? It's for her daughter, I'm sorry. It, she has been diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Okay. She had apraxia and some other neurological um, disability diagnoses but she's 13 years old and her mom has seen the video on thyroid disease. Okay, got it. So she's definitely, um, but is, is there a potential that she's been exposed to heavy metals or um, like vaccinations at birth have a lot to do with autism and, or excuse me, with um, neurological disorders um, and also glyphosate is huge. So depending on like where their location is, where they're living, how much they're breathing in, you know, there are higher zones in the, throughout the country, which is super sad, but there's a lot of areas where people are getting exposed to high levels of pesticides. So for a 13 year old, I would change their diet first, of course. Um, I would get off of, you know, eggs and dairy are the biggest culprits of continuing to take down the thyroid and the endocrine health. Um, and they congest the limb system so much. I'm a huge advocate for plant-based living. Um, it, it's just, there's just so much research on it. Every time you go plant-based, you heal the body, right? You get rid of cholesterol, you break down plaque, you, you know, the, the lymph system cleans up. So I would suggest if the daughter is open to going plant-based to really focus on those organic fruits and veggies, I would integrate two. I would start with one, but I would integrate two kids shakes per day one for breakfast, one after school, something like that. Um, and then I would definitely do the kids in focus to support the nervous system and the adrenal glands. Um, that would be probably be my approach there. Um, and then the white American ginseng could be really helpful to balance the endocrine hormones. That would be my Purium suggestions. And then, you know, I would start there. And then if she needs deeper support, she's welcome to reach out to somebody at the clinic if she'd like deeper support, but I think she'll make some really good progress just starting there. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I have one other person that is here. She is wanting um, to fully understand how the protocol will assist with menopause and menopausal weight gain. And I know you spoke a little bit about the hormonal balance that happens with the protocol, but if you can talk a little bit specifically about menopause. I did a call on menopause a couple of weeks ago. Did she get a chance to watch that? No, ma'am. I'm going to get her the video after afterwards, but she was able to hop on the call today. So I just kind of brought her on. No problem. Absolutely. So yeah, so that call will be really helpful because it'll be a little bit more thorough. Um, but in general, weight gain is happening because your hormones are, are in disarray, right? And so one, balancing hormones helps, but two, the biggest reason why people experience so many menopause symptoms is really in relation to the environment their body is in. If you're in an acidic environment, you're going to deal with, and your hormones are going all over the place, especially like estrogen, which is, a, it's actually an acid in the body. So it increases your inflammation and it increases your water retention and it increases, you know, the cells all surrounding themselves with extra protection. So you will gain more weight 
when you're in an acidic environment going through menopause. Um, and a lot of it is fluid retention as well. So what we focus on here in our detox overall is focused on not only detoxifying heavy metals, chemicals, parasites, toxins out of the body, but we're also getting your body into an alkaline environment. So it doesn't respond so extreme to the hormone shifts that are happening. Um, a really good example of this is, you know, one of my patients, she didn't even know she went through menopause. Like there was no symptoms because she had been doing this diet for so long. And I have another person that was, appro was approaching menopause, having horrible symptoms, um, night sweats, like break hot flashes all day long, headaches, nausea, like all of it, weight gain and started our programs. And, um, not only this is crazy, but she, she avoided menopause. She's back to cycling and all of her symptoms went away, which is actually a really good thing because the longer you cycle, the younger your body thinks you are. But at some point we all have to go through menopause, right? Um, so when we go through it, you can actually go through it with a lot more ease when you change the environment of your body. So that's what our programs do. They clean up the environment. They make the help the body get alkaline. They detoxify parasites, metals, and toxins out of the body, and they help reduce inflammation and free radical damage and stress. So for a menopause, I would do white American ginseng. I would do be energetic and I would do a ULT. The, oh, and this, the super life formula can also be helpful if it's in the budget. Um, the super life formula helps with the hormonal health. Okay. Thank you so much, Terry. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for bringing people on. Okay. Anybody else here have questions, have a guest? Katie. Hi, always a great call. Thank you, Terry. So um, I have someone I was talking to and she wasn't able to make it on. Um, but I will, um, oh, someone's asking in the chat, did you say super life or super lights? Super life. Um, so I will read a little bit of what she is experiencing. Um, she said she's had, when she's looked at some of your video, videos, really interested, but she's had some swollen lymph nodes in the front of her neck. Um, she's certified in lymphatic drainage, can't get them down after eight months. Mm. She's had visual disturbances hearing issues, excessive sweating, ringing in the ears, headaches, six to seven week long periods, off birth control now, um, anxiety, as well as other things. But that's, mm. that's, yeah. So that's, she's dealing with a lot. So it's a lot. Um, she's got parasites. I'm going to put it boldly <laughs> when the lymph nodes are swollen. So your lymph nodes are your septic tanks. Um, so 80% of your body's fluid is lymph and it's designed to clean the body of parasites, pathogens, microbes, metals, anything that doesn't belong in here. That's what the lymph system is bringing via the lymph vessels and then to the lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes are like the dumping, the septic tank. So constant swelling in the lymph nodes means that your septic tanks are backed up and your body always pulls parasites into them. So viruses, parasites, pathogens, things that don't belong. Um, so you need to get your pathogen load down ASAP and really alkalize the body. The ringing in the ears is adrenal medulla weakness. Um, the, can you tell me some of the other symptoms, Katie? That was a lot really quick. Yeah, sorry. Um, let's see. Ringing in ears, you mentioned headaches, six to seven week long periods. So she is off birth time. control now um, and anxiety. Okay. So anxiety is adrenal. Um, headaches are usually hormonal and parasitic. Um, and then the six to seven week long period is her endocrine system or hormone levels are all messed up. Um, so that's pituitary function, but it starts with the gut. So what I would do is a regular ULT to start. I would absolutely do the be energetic to support her adrenal glands. Her nervous system needs it. I would do the white American ginseng to support the endocrine system and the balancing of the hormones. Um, and I would do the virus sugar and the antiviral to start getting her viral loads down. So those lymph nodes will come down. And I would, I would take cherry juice twice a day to help reduce inflammation and open up the kidneys. Thank you, Carrie. So listening to something like this, I know I, I always say like, 
30 days is good 60 days is better 90 days is best like she's, she's not a lot. i would say so. i would say plan for three to five months of of cleaning okay um, she'll feel significantly better in the first month um but you don't want to just get to where symptoms are just at bay right you want to reverse what's going on in the body um and really get the kidneys open and, and change the diet and yeah fruits berries and melons Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Carrie. You're welcome. Jen. I have your cute face on. I me. Know. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Um, yeah, I have two people who couldn't be on, but I'm going to be speaking to them in the next day or two about getting going. So I have um, Bridget, who is um, we chatted with her briefly, but she um, she said she's not grain free right now, but she's dealing with fibromyalgia. And you said you did suggest like the Epi kids, but she eats rice like every day. Um, <clears throat> so do you think month one, then. Okay, I was gonna say like month one. Month one regular ULT, month two ULT Epi Kids, month three grain free pack. Um, anything else to um uh, I mean fibromyalgia is is extremely um adrenal and fungal related. So making sure that she's gonna do the I would do the the super cleanse three months in a row. Um, definitely the be energetic, most definitely. And then the ionic elements can be really helpful um, uh, in one calcium and balancing minerals in the body and just helping the body repair and rebuild. Um, joint flex would be great with fibromyalgia. Those are just extra suggestions. She'll get great results with just the ULT, but those extras will be really helpful. Okay. Um, Megan, to answer your question, I don't like to see things are bad, but rice is an inflammatory food and it is acidic. So it's a pH of two and we need to be at an internal pH of 7.4. So whenever we're eating foods that are acid forming or mucus forming, we cause inflammation and cellular damage in the body. So we're a little different here. We focus on like alkaline, like changing the environment of your body by eating life-giving foods. So we focus a lot on fruits and berries and melons and greens and fresh juices and superfoods. And yeah, the things that grow like from the trees, I would say the higher you eat from the ground, the longer you stay out of the ground. That's, that's a good saying. Um, <laughs> one, one other gal. Um, so Kim, she's dealing with like like she can never get better. Like she's constantly dealing with viruses, 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 like over and over and over. She has like sinus infections. Like she'll like feel better for a few days and then something will come back and attack. So, I mean, I'm assuming you're just going to suggest like the ULT, but it, and then I was thinking like the virus share. I would do the ULT and the virus share. And as a practitioner, Jen, I'd put her on the fab five for sure. She needs to get her drainage pathways open because you can kill off parasites and pathogens, but if your body can't drain them out properly, they're just going to come back. Um, so I would, I would really focus there. I would do a fab five if it's in the budget, or at least start with the ULT and then maybe discuss going into like herbs later, like some stronger herbs. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Christy. Hey, Carrie. So um, what would you recommend for um, prostate health? Well, I mean, overall prostate health is a big question. Is it inflammation, prostate inflammation and frequent urination? Like what, in what ways? Um, or yeah, she just said any recommendations for prostate health. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Gotcha. So, I mean, one, if there's issues with the prostate, that means that there's a, there's an issue. The root cause is the environment of the body. So if it's inflammation, we can get rid of inflammation easy by doing a, a cleanse, right? So we want to bring the overall inflammation down. If it's um, testosterone issues, if it's um, pain in the prostate, frequency in urination, if it's uh, erectile dysfunction, which are prostate issues, these are all um, an endocrine issue, which means the root is the gut and the second is the pituitary that communicates with the whole endocrine system. Um, so I would do a 30 day ULT for sure. Um, I would be on the men's defense is good for the prostate. There's like some really good herbs in there. Um, and 
I would probably say the be energetic to get rid of inflammation in the body to support the adrenal glands and then changing the diet. The biggest thing is get off of dairy, get off of meat and grain. You know, there's a book called um, no grain, no pain. Um, but yeah, the grains are highly inflammatory. So it's, it's hard because it's generalized um, prostate going <coughs> exactly, but those would be my suggestions for now. Okay. I, I thought maybe super life. Is there the super light formula is great for bringing up the hormone health, like really great. So if that's an issue, that's going to be very helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. All right. So did we get to everybody that had questions today? Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to stop recording.